Hello there. What's up, y'all? My name's Mrs. Zoo Nation, aka Savage Armor June Giraffe. Yeah, Welcome to my birthday video. That's right. Today is my birthday. Uh, the time, the day that this video is being released is my birthday. But anyway, um, today I decided what better way to celebrate my birthday than to actually react to Mega Colony videos. Because I was like, yo, I want to react to my most favorite clan. It's 10 years of Vanguard, 7 years for me because I started back in 2014. But I was like, yo, let me, uh, man, let me ask people in the van in the Mega Colony community, hey, can I react to your deck list? Can I react to your deck list videos? And I was like, yo, this is going to be fire, man. I was like, yo, what better way to spend my birthday than to react to those videos? And I was like, yo, um, this is going to be actually pretty cool because I also have more than just a reaction to these. And let me tell you really quickly, um, hopefully it's really quickly, how I got to this particular point. So um, it was one week before um overdress was announced and i was you know at this particular time i really wasn't expecting to really do a, a reboot a lot of people really wasn't expecting to do a reboot or people was expecting it and they were forcing to quit if that was the case but anyway i was like yo um i looked at the calendar i saw i was like yo what is my birth what day is on my birthday so it turns out it was on a saturday i was like okay I still have to work, but I it I at least have a Saturday birthday. That would be actually pretty cool. And this normal place that I usually go get cars that I have to take like a 45 minute trip to, I can also go on that same day because we only make those trips whenever like a Vanguard set comes out. So it turns out that the Bane Dream set was coming out um, on the 5th of March. And I was like, the next day is Saturday where we normally make our trips. And I was like, yo, I can do this and actually like buy some stuff. So I was like, okay, I was ready to do that. But then I looked at like February. I was like, yo, how many Saturdays is in February? Cause I want to do like a little lead up to everything. So, um, turns out that there's only four um, Saturdays in February and there's four different versions of make colonies. So I was like, yo, each Saturday, I would do a review video of each version of Mega Colony. So there's Machining, Gun and Colio, um, Gredor with the Cradle Marker, and then you also have Venom Stinger, which I can do Venom Stinger last because he's going to come out the next day. I mean, the previous day. So I was like, yo, this is actually pretty fire. So then the overdress announcement came up and we were turned out that we're getting a reboot. And I was like, okay, so the reboot did happen. Um, it's weird how they did everything, but I was like, yo, I actually want to vent, vent on about the V series. So I was like, because everything's based on nations and because I can split it into four different videos, I decided, hey, let me increase the videos for my haters guy videos and was like um each week i would do uh i would do clans and talk about what i thought about them throughout the v series you know based on nation so one was united sanctuary the second one was Johannic empire the third one was a mixture of the dark zone and the stargate and then the last one because now they're becoming Strakonia or Strakonia or I don't know how you tell me how to pronounce that name man I don't know how to pronounce that nation's name so because they're becoming Strakonia um I was going to do the the Magalania and Zoo Nation clans all in one and I'm gonna be real with you when I did that Zoo Nation one that hurt so much I'm gonna be real with you on that that, that hurt my heart <laughs> that hurt my heart that I had to talk about Neo Nectar, Great Nature, and Mega Colony that way. That that hurt my heart. But anyway, um, and trust me, I went in. I'm going in on every single clan. I'm not even gonna lie on that. But uh, anyway, outside of all that, I had all this thing planned. So Friday, I will come out with the haters guide, and Saturday, 
I will come out with the Dark Device special. But then my job decided to say, oh, fuck this guy. You know, uh, we're going to fuck up his whole, we're going to fuck up his whole schedule. So guess what happened? My schedule got changed. And I'm so mad because I just had to work at the days that I was going to record all the videos. I was like, yo, I have two days straight where I'm off work. I have three, it's usually I have three days off work, but there's two of them that goes back to back. And I was like, yo, um, I'll just record on one day, edit on another day, and then by Friday and Saturday, it will be uploaded. Nah, that didn't happen. I was so tired that I was missing like half the days. And I'm still mad that that had to happen. It even got it to a point where I had to start drinking coffee, man. <laughs> I, I became a coffee nut because of that, man. I was so mad at that. But anyway, long story short, I came out with four different videos of uh, the Dark Device. And it was all supposed to lead up to today where it was supposed to be a birthday special. Now, uh, enough with that. This is going to be a long video. So I'm going to react to some videos first, and then I'm going to do the picture reactions. And then after that, guess what? I'm going to do a little bit special. I call this the Spirit Bomb. Now, if you, I, everybody should know what the Spirit Bomb from, you know, Dragon Ball Z. Oh, give me your energy and all that other type of stuff. Basically, what I wanted it to do was go over everybody's deck list try to use the most commonly used cards and everything else like that smash it into one standard one and another premium one and just be like yo uh not only make a deck list that was based on everybody's you know opinions and stuff like that but i wanted to make it a make it a community deck list you know a deck list where we as Mega Colony players, um, or anybody who's not really a Mega Colony player watching this, but it'll be kind of interesting to see watch. You know, I wanted to see like, yo, we as Mega Colony player, like the Mega Colony community, could be like, yo, we 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 have a deck list that is inspired by every single Mega Colony player, and then we can basically adjust it the way we want to. So it's like that would be fun. That would actually be something fun to be doing. So that's what I wanted to do. Wanted to, uh, just wanted to do that. So, like I said, we're gonna react to all these deck lists at the end of the video. I'll show you the deck that I came up with, and then maybe like a day or two later, I'll post the deck list up, and then we can start. You know, we can we can start managing everything. But not only that, I'm hoping that if I can get a match in with one of my friends, like using you know a camera and all that you know hopefully i can get a vanguard match in with said deck so that's basically the thing but anyway let's get this started all right so uh our first video is going to be a machine spark hercules premium deck profile by uh vanguard i think that's how i hope i'm saying your name right um i was actually planning on doing like a machining premium deck but I didn't know where to start. So this is going to be pretty interesting to see. Um, this looks pretty short, so it's going to be pretty interesting. I definitely like to see what this guy is going to say or do or anything else like that. So let me uh, turn it down a little bit. There we go. All right, all right. All right. And three copies of Dead Warden Ant Lion. Oh, okay. So he using the Ant Lion combo steal. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm 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 intrigued to see what he has next. Oh, the Ant Lion. You know, here's the thing. Um, in my honest opinion, the reason why I didn't really expect Ant Lion to be in the deck list is because if you really think about it, the older version of Machinings was so strict on everything have a machine in his name that I was like, I don't think he can really tech anything else in here. But I'm gonna see what else he has though, because that that threw me off. I'm not even gonna lie. Oh, 
It looks like standard plus premium, now that I think about it. That's probably why it's throwing me off a little bit. This looks like standard plus premium. That table is so small. A black lion. That's what I. That's what I called that combo. Black lion. I was like, that thing looks. That thing sounds fierce. Black lion. Let's go. <laughs> like I was like, because everybody called it like phantom black ant lion co combo, and I was like, nah. Let's call this the black lion, bruh. <laughs> that sound. I was like, that sounds a lot more menacing and a lot more badass. So let's go with this. Let's go. Let's see what you got next. You know what, Brony Jerk is actually a pretty underrated card. Like, I can understand why some people don't really want to run it, though, but the fact that you're able to not only force your opponent to mill, but also force your opponent to discard, despite that you also have to discard, it's actually a pretty good card, and I don't understand why not enough people actually, you know, um... I don't know why, like, enough people don't really go with this particular card. You know what? I just thought about this. It says V Premium, which basically means this is V Stand. Why can't we just call it V Standard? Like, why people got to call it V Premium? See, that just messes me up and all that and everything. So, now that it says V Premium, now I'm kind of understanding, like, everything. Uh, okay, this makes a lot more sense. I cannot believe I thought this was regular premium. But still, I'm actually glad to see... That somebody's actually using machining in standard format. Or V Premium, if anybody want to call it. Sadly. Six draws, you know what, to be honest, that's actually pretty valid. Like, six draws in, in Machinings, because Machinings doesn't really gather too much hand advantage, that's actually pretty fair. So, yeah, I was expecting six draws, if that was the case. All right, so this video right here where he's going against Top Idol Riviere with this deck, I'm going to watch it later. Um, not this video. I'll do a next video uh, if the guy wants me to, to um, do it. But, yeah, shout-outs to um, Van Grub. Oh, this came out, like, a little bit under a month ago. So I did see, like, bits and pieces of this one. He actually sold this deck. So I was like, oh, okay, understandable. <laughs> I don't I don't really blame him. So yeah, that was actually pretty cool to watch. So this one is supposed to be standard Ghidorah, and from the looks of it, 
Oh, he has all three. He has like three Mickey comedy decks. Okay, let's. Oh, hold up, hold up. Look at that. Before we start this, look at this Gridora man. He has OG Gridora, Empress Gridora, and V Series Gridora. Oh, dude. I low key, like, yo, yo. If you watching this, send me a link to that picture of that mat. Because I actually want that mat. That looks fire. <laughs> So I've built the uh, Gredora standard deck, and then I've built the Gunning Corio standard deck, and also the new card, the Phantom Stinger standard deck. Uh, only the machine, uh, Spark Hercules, I don't have those uh, decks yet. Maybe soon I will get uh, those decks in Japan or maybe in some local store. So for the first deck profile, I'm going to show you guys my uh, updated uh, Gredora deck profile. So let's go to the deck profile. So for the first Before we start, um as far as this thing goes, I'm gonna also react to the next one, which is gonna be the Venom Stinger. At the time of recording this video, he hasn't came up with the gun and colio, I don't think. But once he does, I'm gonna definitely react to that as well. Deck profile, I'm gonna show you my Gredora standard deck profile. Uh, I already update this uh, deck with the new uh, premium, I mean festival collection, the VSS. And I've play tested it and yeah, it's kind of fun using this deck with the new support. So let's just get into the deck. First for the grid 3, I run of course for the main boss, this is the Dark Priest Gridora. Hey. And I run... Two of the new Venom Stinger. So this is at the secondary rat target for this deck. And also run two Dark Face. Okay, I can see that. Two the new uh, Insert Insert Caesar. And of course, still I bring two of the Skull Demise. The reason I why I bring this uh, card. Uh, it's free. It's free cost instead of this. And also, you can uh, rest one of your opponent back row or with this effect. And the reason I bring this card because it pump more power. So when you call it by the greater effect, it get plus ten k. And then you call it by this effect, you increase this the effect. You soul rest one, and then you get more ten k. So you get tw twenty uh, with this only. Fair point. Because I remember after Intrulu Scissors came out, everybody was trying to figure out, yo, uh, do we run Scissors or do we run, um, or do we run Hell Demise? Because Hell Demise is free, but Scissors isn't. But in the reality, you also get plus 10k. But at the same time, I feel like the problem with Scissors, in my honest opinion, is it does clash with sticky bolus whereas prior to interlude scissors coming out um you know your soul blast was actually just solely dedicated to sticky bolus so you had more free range with her but i can also kind of see both of these being in the deck at the same time at those particular ratios there is another question though um, in my personal opinion, I feel like that interlude scissors should be run at two, maybe three tops, depending on what deck it is. But I do see some people running at a playset, so I want you. I want to see what you guys think about all this. Using the greater effect, and also you because of you bring this card, you have to use this because if you because I bring the new uh, Phantom Stinger. I have to bring this card too. And for the main gameplay on my Gredora deck is Focusing on Cradle because I bring this card so you can easily retire those uh, grid that you want. Maybe some grid 3 for the new uh, grid 1 support or maybe the grid 1 if you want to get some perfect guard grid 1, grid 1 perfect guard. 
I just bring two because you can search uh, the effect with this red dot effect. They can you can because you can search this card with this effect red dot effect. And that's for the grid three lineup. And next for the grid two lineup. For the grid two, I run three of these PP wallets, three of the mantis, and two bloody hair toys. Yo, 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 before he says anything, is the bloody Hercules because if you kill, if you attack somebody with the cradle marker, they're not going to block it. So therefore, you're going to get your, um, you're going to get your counter flip. Is that the reason? Let's see. Uh, I run 3-3-2 three, three, because this guy, or PP Wallace, you, uh, you can add uh, two dark face in a different name because I bring this card and this card. So if sometimes you get lucky, you can uh, get those, these two of these cards. And the reason I run still run Mantis because uh, I can search my deck. Uh, I can get my uh, Grid One support, the new uh, high class mod, because in decks. Or in soul, it regarded as a great three. So yep. I start to get those cards and get. I also made high class moth bust it. <laughs> and some looping skills. So I bring this because it's uh, attack hit. You counter charge one and get another unit plus six k. And it's good for counter charging. That's for the grid two, and next for the grid one. For the grid one lineup, I run four of the new uh, high class moth. This is the perfect card in the uh, entire set of Mega Colony, I think. My in my opinion, because it's regarded as a great three in Soul and in X. Hold on, hold on. This card alone, high class moth, legitimately fixed nearly half the issues that Mega Colony had prior to that set. Prior to this set, like let's be real on that. This fixes a lot of issues because there was a lot of grade threes that had, um, you know, Soul Blast, a grade three effect and everything else like that. And this fixes the problem because not only you don't have to overload your deck with a bunch of unblockable units, but this is a pseudo grade three. So at the end of the day, you not only have a grade three that you can search, but you also have a grade three that you can block with. That's what also makes it good. But the minus thing is you cannot search this card with the uh, cradle effect if you retire a grid one. So you have to retire a grid three if you. Yeah, have that's true. Cards in your deck. So I have some misplay on the uh, post videos. But yes, someone told me that you cannot search. The effect cradle because it's regarded grade three, and then yes, I have already confirmed it uh, to Bashirud, and the Bashirud said you cannot search for grid uh, cradle effect. That makes sense. Grade one. So you have to retire a grade three, and then I run three uh, butterfly officer. So the power pump and also the end sweeper, and you get uh, more soul. I also run this uh, three skilled millipede for the counter charge and the pressure. If you if this unit uh, on still in the in the in the area in the set in the field as rest, uh, the entire column of your uh, opponent uh, in the same column as the unit cannot stun. So it's still a pressure card for me. And if this unit attack hits, you get free soul and free counter charge. Facts. Also, I run two of the uh, Morshiroro. I don't know what's her name. Morshiroro. Don't worry, I have a hard time mis mispronouncing her name too. <laughs> you get any card with this, so you, you retire this unit, and you retire one of your opponent cradle unit with a cradle, and you call the same grade from your deck to the battlefield to the area, and then you can add. Uh, the same grid by the cradle effect from the deck to your hand. It's still a good card for me. And the last, I run the perfect guard, grid one perfect guard. So you can loop this with this effect, 
också. Men... So, if you use the perfect card uh, on the last turn, uh, use this effect, so you put it back to your bottom deck, and then you use this uh, effect, so you, re you retire one of your uh, opponent cradle, if that unit is a grade 1, you can add this again. So, free perfect card uh, each turn. Facts. That's for the grade 1 lineup. Uh, next, for the trigger. For the trigger lineup, I run... 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, six, seven, eight critical. Hey. Okay, critical. And I run four draws. Two of the perfect card draw. Oh shit! He hit the camera. Oh, yo, I did that before too. I'm not gonna lie. There was a time when I was trying to do a deck profile and I hit the camera on accident. Yo, I feel this pain on that. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. And my best starter, Machining Warfare. I'm trying to think, do I like Machining Working Ramp better than the other starter, or is it the other way around? I don't know, man. I kinda, I'm pissed that we only got two starters. Like, every other clan had, like, three, maybe four tops, four starters tops. We only got two starters in V. I'm so mad at that. Uh, I'm going to change it to... But then again, I think I only changed it to the other one because we had Worker in for like almost two years before we got that a third one. So I think that's the reason why I like the other one better a little bit. and three draws but for me now this trigger is still the best uh, because you get you can get the perfect guard from the grade one yeah much, uh, draw sentinel. which is also what i like and about that too get the, so it because because it is a base protect base deck every time you rather grid three you get a sentinel so you don't need that much on the uh, credit uh, i mean draw perfect guard Facts. If you want to, uh, you can use 12 crits. So, 3 of the critical sentinel and change it to crit so you get more full power on posting the opponent. But for me, uh, this is the safest trigger lineup. So, yeah, that's for my deck profile. And thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Nice. All right, now we're going to look at his second one, which is supposed to be Venom Stinger. So I'll meet you guys there in a bit. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And for today's Mega Collector video, uh, I'm going to show you my uh, Venom Cure uh, deck profile. So why do I call this Venom Cure? Because the right, the main right target in this deck profile, I only use Venom Stinger. I don't use any uh, Gredora or Gunning Folio, only... You got my attention, sir. Let, let's let's see this spicy deck profile. As the main right target. So let's go to the deck profile. First of all, for the grid three lineup, I run four of the Venom Stinger. Of course, because uh, he is the main target, the main red right target. And for the second second grid three, I run four of the inflict scissor. So uh, this thing is a perfect combination. And for the last grid three, I run two devastic. I, I expect that. I'm not even gonna lie. I kind of expect it. <laughs> these two cards because yeah, even though you get any, you get protect marker and this uh, skill uh, on Vanguard and the Vanguard circle but uh, this uh, unit doesn't get any power plus uh, so it's kind of meh if you write this on Vanguard and also this card doesn't have any Vanguard circle skill so it's also meh 
if you write this part, you have to write this part on uh, as the main target, as the main write target. Let's some say you have a, re a really bad luck day, then you have to write this or maybe this card. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you have no choice. So that's for the grid three. I only run 10 grid threes and next for the grid two right now. For the grid two, I run four of the machining monkeys, the grid three searcher. And I also run three of the Gala Lancer. And the last grid two, I run two uh, Bloody Hercules. I want to change this card into Killer Leaf, I think. You know what I'm starting to know is you like Bloody Hercules. There ain't nothing wrong with that though, but that, that's actually pretty spicy. I think it's me. So Final Quest 1, Final Quest 1, uh, get plus 10k, and also your opponent mill 1. If your opponent mill grid 1 on 1, you draw a card. But I already tested with that card. Uh, it's more heavy counter blast and more heavy soul. So I prefer this card. It has a uh, on hit pressure. So you get uh, 6k on your other unit. And you can counter just one. So it's better. And also this card I use for the soul resource. And last but not least, also the grid 3 searcher. Next for the grid 2, and next for the grid 1. For the grid 1, I run, of course, the new support. The high Valentino team. from Has Been Hotel. Yes. Uh, <laughs> That's what I call him. <laughs> and then I run 4 of the ten, uh, Skilled Melee Piece. I run little door drops and I run two of this card. Oh shit! <laughs> oh, that caught me off guard, dude. That caught me off. What? Hold on. What's your reason, sir? What's your reason? Power horde. Power horde. Uh, I don't have any other grid one. I have Brownie Jack, but I use it on my Diamond Soldier deck, so I will post it uh, after I finish this deck profile. And uh, this card is the best for at uh, this moment, I think. So you, you can discard one and draw one card, so if your opponent doesn't have any stand unit, so this unit gets plus 5k, another 5k uh, boost is uh, good. So it can be a 13 uh, beater. Or maybe a 13 booster. And still, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have four. I only have three until this uh, video. Maybe I'm gonna find it later. I prefer four of this card. So, four, four, and four, and two, the other. Maybe. Oh! Or maybe this card. That makes sense. But at this moment, I prefer this uh, list. So, four, four, three, two. That's for the grid uh, one. Next for the trigger lineup. For the trigger lineup, I run five draws. So three of the perfect guard and two the normal draw. Seven crit, one sentinel, and six normal crit. Makes sense. I'll give you that. And still the best starter, machining worker. <laughs> Uh, I prefer this uh, kind of trigger lineup because I don't like any I don't like any rush thing, uh, such as ten crit or maybe twelve crit. I rather play safe, as I said on the on my previous video. I rather play safe with this kind of trigger uh, lineup. Maybe you can maybe you can adjust your own trigger to ten uh, crit two draws or maybe eight four. Uh, uh, you can do it as you want. But for my safest trigger lineup, I use this card. So. I don't blame him. Um, basically, he's trying to play mid range, which I'm gonna be real with you. Um, I would take mid range over aggro any day. Like, it's not the fact that I don't like aggro style playing. It's just the fact that I know that there's going to be certain situations where I would have wish I had the defense to 
you know, um, play against certain decks. So him going mid range, I can a hundred percent understand why he's doing that. So I'll give him kudos for that. I, I I will admit that. So that that's actually pretty cool though. That is actually pretty cool. And don't forget to subscribe, uh, put a like, and comment in below if you like the decklist or not, or maybe you have your own uh, personal opinion, you can put it in the comments. So, have a nice day. Thanks for watching. Thank you. <laughs> so, that was his part two um, with Venom Stinger. I'm definitely waiting to see what he the what he does with a oh why am I, why can't I talk? I'm waiting to see what he does with Gun and Colio. That grade one threw me off. I'm not even gonna lie. That, <laughs> that might have been too much of an overreaction. I will admit that, but that threw me off. Dangerous horn threw me off. I'm not even gonna lie on that. That's that's spicy. Uh, it's not even not it's not even just spicy. It's daring. It's actually pretty daring, and that's actually making me willing to try that out, too. Like, I kind of want to try that out now, but I can definitely tell he likes Bloody Hercules. Like, originally, I thought it was because of Bloody Hercules versus Cradle Marker, but clearly, this guy likes Bloody Hercules, so I can't really blame him on that. That's his deck profile. I like the fact that Bloody Hercules is still getting some play, so I'm kind of glad for that. But anyway, uh, let's get on to this last video. All right, so bear with me on this. Uh, I tried to record everything through, like, the fuddle thing. But, uh, yeah, for some reason, OBS doesn't want to uh, get that. So I'm feeling everything from Photoshop. Like, this is weird. I'm not even going to lie. Like, the last thing I would have thought I would have done was you know view everything through photoshop but anyway today we got some interesting and tasty photos right here um we got like i think we got about we got about six of them yeah we got about six of them all right so um this first one i'm looking at is made by zane s like i mentioned um some of these are through people's actual facebook profiles so I'm not going to actually, um, I'm not actually going to say the full name. I'm going to say their first name and then like a abbreviation of like their last name, like the first letter. Um, but if anybody who I actually do their deck list actually wants to say something or doesn't really mind it, then tell me and then I'll actually, um, post the full name. But anyway, so this first one is by uh, Zane S. So from what I'm looking at it, it is Venom Stinger Ghidorah. Let's see, Greek, uh, three Ghidorah, um, four Interlude, four Venom Stinger. Um, okay, so from the looks of it, it looks like Venom Stinger is supposed to be the main grade three and Ghidorah is supposed to be the backup, which there's nothing really wrong with that. Because I, I feel like with Gredora, in my honest opinion, like she obviously has some faults in any main grade three that's paired up with Ghidorah basically feels in the faults that she has. And it's kind of sort of vice versa with the other thing too. But this is actually pretty interesting. Um, let me see. <sighs> oh, excuse me. So this is like 11 grade threes, which is actually pretty good. Let's see. Oh, and this, this one, this is an interesting thing that I like about this deck list. It's running water game. And I was like, yo, why is, uh, I was like, I was curious of why he was running water game in the deck. And he was basically telling me that it was supposed to be something else though. But when you really think about it, water game is actually a pretty good water. It's actually a pretty good hand resource. I'm not even going to lie on that. Like, it's one of those things where it definitely has its purpose. Um, it's not like a huge purpose. Like, who remembers that combo from like a year ago when everybody was running? Um, what was it? It was 
Hail Demise, Water Gang, and um and machining stag beetle. That's what it was. So you will put you'll have water gain in the soul and hell demise in the soul. You'll call out stag beetle. Um stag beetle will call out both of them. Hell demise will restand water gain. Water gain will use his ability to go back into the deck and then draw two. That was an actually pretty interesting combo. I do remember people using that back in the days of uh Gun and Colio. I do remember that too. That was actually pretty hilarious. Um, so that kind of takes me back. Um, and then of course we have the usual um Mantis and Megalar Lancer. That's also a thing too. Um, to be honest, I like I do like the Grade Two lineup. I actually do like it. Um, it's running ten instead of eight, so that's an interesting change about it. But then we go to the Grade One lineup. And outside of um, outside of Clear Breeze, everything is a countercharger. Like you got um, you got High Class Moth that can countercharge. You got uh, Stealth Multi P that can countercharge, and then you also have Butterfly Officer that can Soul Charge and countercharge. Well, its main purpose is to countercharge, but it's also technically a Soul Charger. So that def that definitely works. Um, I do like this variant. Um, the grade one lineup especially. Uh, the cradle marker, you know, utilizing cradle markers, like it's like only Grudora and Clear Breeze does it. But let's be real, Clear Breeze is mainly there just to put interlude scissors into the graveyard. That's basically how I'm interpreting it. Like she's basically there just to put interlude in there so that's actually pretty good as well um interesting enough like this you know here's the weird thing i just all notice there's not that many great three searchers but that's actually pretty interesting too because like um filling up your deck with nothing but great three searchers kind of get boring after a while so that's what i kind of actually like about this tech i am not even gonna lie on that um, and then of course you got the trigger lineup, which is, um, eight, four, uh, eight, four and four. So it's eight criticals, uh, four draws, four heals. Um, there's like, it's just kind of balanced overall. And actually, to be honest, that's kind of sort of what I like about this deck list the most. It feels balanced. Like there's nothing overpowering one of the other. Um, it feels like it gets straight to the point. It feels diverse enough to actually tackle like more than what is normally supposed to tackle. So that's what I kind of like about this deck list. Overall, I like it. Um, especially seeing that it's utilizing stealth multi key, because like most people right now, from what I'm seeing, isn't really using stealth multi key like that. At least in V standard, they're not, which is a little bit understandable. But um, especially seeing that high class mob just came out of nowhere and just was like. I'm the best counter charger you got. There's no way you can't play me in a deck. So I don't really blame anybody for that. But anyway, um, moving on to the next one. I think it's gonna exit me out of the next one if I think so. Hold on. Is it still showing on the thing? Oh, it's still showing on the thing. Okay. So this one is made by Tim B. And this is Oh, this is actually a full Gredora deck list. And this is actually pretty interesting ratios too. So let's see, we got four Gredora, we got three Interlude, two um, Intimidate Mutant Darkface, and we got two Hell Demise. So interesting enough, he's used, oh, I like that map by the way, actually. I'm not even gonna lie, that map looks spicy too. But anyway, um, he's using both Interlude and he's using um Hell Demise in one deck, which I'm be real with you. Um, like I mentioned before, I think I mentioned it, yeah, I mentioned it before. Um, Interlude and Hell Demise being in the same deck is kind of sort of like 50 50. You gotta find like a balance between it because as much as I like Interlude, him he is fighting counter chart, counter um, soul not counter blast, he's fighting soul blast with um with sticky bolus so it's a little bit understandable why hell to my still has a place 
Um, so Hell to Mind still has a place basically because um, there's just some times where you only have one Soul Blast left and you have to decide if you're willing to use a Soul Blast for Interlude or you're willing to use a Soul Blast for Sticky Bolas. And trust me, that is very hard to choose, which is why I feel like Hell to Mind and Interlude being the same deck is actually pretty good. Um, and 10 Day Mutant Dark Face is at 2. Which is actually a pretty good thick combo too. Well, I'm, I'll, I say two a lot. I'm not even gonna lie on that. But uh, Intimidate Mutant Dark Face is pretty good as well. Um, he has he has his useless. I mean, um, he has his uses, not useless. He has his uses. So that's the thing. Um, and then let's see the usual. Oh, he's running seven grade twos. He's not running eight grade twos. He's running seven grade twos. Oh my god, that is dangerous, but I like it. <laughs> that's that's pretty dangerous. I'm not even gonna lie on that. Um, actually, now that I'm like looking at the list, it looks like pure Gredora. Actually, now that I think about it, um, because it's like what four sticky bolus. It's three, um. It's three Machine and Mantis, which is actually pretty good too. Um, and then you're running a full play set of everything in the Grade One lineup besides Butterfly Officer, which is understandable. So you got like four Morsi Roro, you got four of the Grade Three Searcher, you got four High Class Moth. That's actually pretty good. So you're running four, eight, twelve, fifteen Grade Ones, fifteen Grade Ones, seven Grade twos in 11 grade threes so that's actually a pretty that's a pretty interesting ratio but you know what to be honest i don't really fault them um mainly because we are in a situation in the game where defense and having shield value is like the number one priority so you still have enough grade twos but you know to be honest the the grade one thing is there mainly so you can just defend yourself from everything else and whatnot so then of course we have our um grade zero lineup which is eight four four which is eight criticals four heals four draws um that actually seems pretty balanced as far as like the triggers go trigger lineup go but i'm actually kind of curious um if you can actually answer this for me tim how often do you have to um what is it how often do you have to g assist because i feel like that it's all it was already bad enough that you have to play eight grade twos like in a deck like at maximum sometimes but if you're running seven how often do you get to your grade twos especially seeing that there's no clear breeze i noticed that too there's no clear breeze so you don't really have like a way to draw into something you know discard draw into something that you want to do so i'm actually kind of curious on that um how often do you actually um yeah how often do you g assist as far as like trying to get to your grade twos and how often do you hit your grade twos very perfectly um that that would be like my only question but outside of that i love it especially the mat it's interesting to see the Yu-Gi-Oh cards <laughs> don't think i'm not gonna mention those you have perfectly ultimately great moth and insect queen my god that takes me back dude <laughs> It's all like, the sad thing is, I never got a chance to use it, like, when they, those cards are at their prime, and I kind of want to use, like, the Insect Queen Turbo in Yu-Gi-Oh!, but it's the Super Cocoon of Evolution, like, that Golden Cocoon one. Um, I don't know how much it costs, like, last time I looked at it, it was, like, 20-something dollars, and I was like, yo, I'm not spending $60 on a deck that's not really meta and at the same time is a fun deck at most but uh if you do run that in Yu-Gi-Oh, tell me how it goes but honestly like looking at ultimately great moth like side to side with you know looking at Yu-Gi-Oh og insect monsters side to side with vanguard you know insects is actually pretty interesting i'm not even gonna lie on that 
Um, anyway, I'll be right back as I get to my third one because something just came up. All right, and I'm back. All right, so we got our first, um, we got our first premium list, which is premium. Oh, I was actually waiting for this. This is actually full blown dark phase. So here's the thing, I made it. Um, I was like temporarily using like a full blown Gridor dark face build, um, in in premium format. I was like, yo. Sticky Bolas can search for any dark phase, right? Might as well take advantage of that by also adding Alakides in the build. So, um, if it looks inverted, just keep in mind that uh, this was originally upside down. But this is by uh, Terrell H. I think I'm saying your name correctly. Hopefully, I'm saying your name correctly. But uh, anyway, look at this, man. Is this the... Let me see. Oh, he's using um that's one of the major differences. So he's using the V series Gridor. I was using like OG Gridor. I'm not even gonna lie on that. I was using OG Gridor to do this particular deck build. But let's see. He got four V series Gridor, two V series Intimidate Mutant Dark Face, two Cyclone Tooth, uh, two Alakides, and one. <laughs> Just got knocked, slapped the hell out. He's That's what just happened. But this is down. But this is down. But this is down. Hold on. I have to search through the archives for this because I don't even remember this guy's name. Hold up. I'm going to have to search for the archives for this a little bit because I don't even remember this guy's name. Oh yeah, I have like a couple of deck boxes with like nothing but Mega Colony shit in it. <laughs> that's why I was like, hold up, I have to go through the archives on this one. No, that's not it. Cause I was like, I don't even remember this guy's name. So I'm even, I'm not only surprised that this card is in the deck, I'm surprised that I'm even looking at this card right now. Cause this is, this is interesting. Okay, hold on. Let me go. I don't even have it in here. I know I have the car, but I don't remember exactly where I put it. It's not in there. But hold up. Let me look. Let me look at. Let me look. Let me look at what this card is real quick. Cause it's been a minute since I've seen this card. <laughs> it's been a huge minute. This is a card that I wasn't even expecting to see in it in a deck build. Hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Where is it? Uh, where is it? Not in. Let me see. Rage and Tactics. Uh, filter to the Grade Three. Filter all the Grade Threes. Let's see. Okay, done with that list. Stagger Seven. Dagger seven. Holy oh, shit. Let's see. Rear guard circle. I remember it, it had some type of like uh it has some type of guard restraints. When it attacks the vanguard, if all fighters units are at rest, cause counter blast one to the end of the battle, this unit gets power 2k 20k. Then soul blast two grade threes. Your opponent chooses a card from his or her hand, discards it. And he or she can only call the same grade from his or her hand as a discarded card's graded. I mean, as a discarded card's grade. I'm deceased. I'm deceased. Yo, this is not only spicy, but this is hella dangerous. Yo. Yo. Why? Okay. To be, to be fair. Like I said, high class moth made a lot of things that used to be impossible possible. And this is this right here is living proof. Not the YouTuber, not the Spy Brothers player. I do respect him though. He's actually pretty cool. Even though I never like really talked to him, but still. This is living proof of a card 
that didn't have no play value whatsoever and finally has some play value because of high class. Wait, where is high class moth? Oh, he's not even playing high class moth. Huh. Interesting. But I can see where this guy was still going. I'm not even going to lie. I can still see where this guy is coming from. So I, I can definitely see this. So let's see. Um, staggering seven. You have uh, Nympho. I don't remember how the hell you say her name. But she's like the one where if she gets retired by a card ability, um, you can soul blast one and put a cradle marker on somebody. Um, it's actually interesting to have her C play. Is that three Megalar Lancers? Yeah, it looks like three Megalar Lancers, which is actually pretty cool. Um, that actually accelerates Stagger 7. <laughs> so when you're using Empress Ghidorah and attack with her, you can just call out Stagger 7, and he just completely wrecks shit. So that, that's the thing. Um... And then, of course, for Sticky Bolus, so you can search out for either Gredora, Intimidate Immune Dark Face, or Alakides, which is basically the reason why I went full blown Dark Face for my premium build. Um, because I felt like that it shouldn't have been wait. The opportunity, in my personal opinion, shouldn't have been wasted. And then, like, let's see, only one. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. I was like. Wait, only one Dork is why? So he's running three of the V-Series Dorks and one of the original, which is actually pretty cool because the original can search out for any Dark Face as long as you have a Grade 3 in hand. And then is also a Stride Fodder, so that's another good thing about the car too. So he's running one of that, three of the V-Series Dorks, um, two Antlion... Oh, yeah, Phantom Blacks. Oh, so... F Damn. Oh, fuck me. So, okay. You play Stagger 7. You use his ability. You boost him with, Ant with Phantom Black. You use Phantom Black's ability to prevent your opponent from blocking with normal units. Your opponent is forced to discard. Wait, wait, no, he's not really. They're not really forced to discard. But actually, yeah, they're actually kind of. In a way, they're kind of sort of forced to discard a grade zero. Because they discard a grade zero, they can't block at all. They either have to G-guard or die. <laughs> they have to either G-guard or die. But even if... Oh my god, that's dumb. That's dumb. My god. Ooh, that's disgusting disgustingly good that's disgustingly good enough to actually try i can see that there was some thought put into that i was like yo if you play phantom black you have to have a very good reason to play phantom black and to be fair that's a good enough reason to play phantom black um and then of course you have some stealth multi piece which is actually pretty good you have um clear breeze at three and then I think that's it for the great one lineups. And then you're running 10 crits, two draws, four heals, where two of the heals is the uh, the unflipper. What is it? I don't know what they call those heals. Like the special heal triggers. Like, you know, like the one where if you use it for a G Guardian, then you banish that in a heal, another heal trigger, and you get an ability. Um, I don't know what they usually call those heals. I'm just calling them the special heals. The G-Guard heals. Um, and then of course, like, the four, um, eight of those criticals is basically the premium collection 19 and 2021. 20, and two of them are the Sentinel crits. Man, there was a lot of interesting text put into this thing. So let's look at the G-Guard lineup. So you have... Um, I, I don't remember her name. The, uh, I don't remember none of the G guard guards name because it's like, I basically just default to one of them and then just use the other ones if I, if I necessarily have to, but he's using two of the ones that 
or top that uh force rests um two cards from your uh no not two cards it rests your entire opponent's back row. Then there's the relish lady that unflips a um a G Guardian. Then there's like the one I normally run, which is the one that if your opponent has two or less, they have like plus 10k. And then of course Oh, he's running Cold Bird as well. Okay, that's actually pretty good too. Um, so then let's like, see one Zoa, um, one Opterandis, one <clears throat> Parpello, and then let's see, we got two of the GB8s, um, two Overwhelm, and four Empress Gordora. This. Just the fact that you're running Stagger 7 alone is just... Man, that that threw me off. That threw me off a lot more than I expected that shit to throw me off. Like, I took a glimpse at this, but I don't even notice the Stagger 7 there. But, uh... Shit, that's actually pretty solid. Um, Especially running the two um, GB8s. I'm kind of curious on how fast you get the GB8 in this build. Like, I actually really want to know how fast you get the GB8 in this build. If you're running two of them, you must be getting to GB8 hella fast. Like, I'm not even going to lie. Now. You must be getting the GB8 mad fast if you're running two of the motherfuckers in there. But, man, this is overall pretty good. Um, I'm also kind of curious on how often do you get cradle markers on the field because for you to be actually using Nympho is actually pretty interesting in the build itself, seeing that nobody really uses her in standard like that. Um, well, from the, the Gridor builds that I've seen, nobody really uses her like that. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely like the like I, I want to know more about this build, man. This is actually pretty cool. <laughs> this is man. Um, I'm also, okay, for anybody who plays premium, has there ever been a time where you actually pulled off Parpello? I, I really want to know that too. Because I if there's any card I definitely want to know the full value of and the whole purpose of is definitely Parpello. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's get on to the next one. All right, so this one is by Sola. I don't know how you say it. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. Um, it's S O L L E H. I don't know how to like exactly see your name, so I am so sorry if I if I uh, butcher it. Uh, by so but Sola. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna just call you so. I'm gonna just call you so. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna give up. I'm gonna actually personally ask what how do you pronounce it. But anyway, he has machining V V series machining, and it's actually kind of similar to mine a little bit. I'm not even gonna lie on that. Like obviously, I wasn't really running. Um, I wasn't running running ornamental. Like I'm still trying to figure out like. With now with Black Saturn, is running ornamental like more worth it than it was prior to Black Saturn? Because in my personal opinion, prior to Black Saturn, I didn't really see a point of really using ornamental. Like, may, not at two. Like at one, maybe not at two. But uh, let's see. He's running two ornamentals. He's running three. Um. Oh yeah, um, three metros. I was trying to figure out. His, I'm sorry. I was trying to figure out his name. So two ornamental, three metros, um, three interlude scissors, four black Saturns. Um, so that is four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so twelve grade threes. So like a little bit one over the the typical eleven. Um, and then he is running two. He is running four. Mantis, four of the scatter shot, and two of the vanilla 12k gray twos. I wonder if it's a defensive thing. Cause 
I've always been skeptical of using the the grade two, the twelve k grade twos that have no shield value, especially when you're playing in a build where you're running a very heavy set of grade threes. Like that's basically like when you can, when you compare this, this is like what fourteen cards with no shield value whatsoever. You go against a super aggro heavy deck, you're just done. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're just done. But uh, I'm actually kind of curious at how good that he works. If I remember correctly, I think this guy does have a YouTube channel and he did do like a video on this. So that's definitely something I got to look at. But uh, it's the usual. I, I feel like we should have got like at least one more grade two machining. Like I definitely felt like we should have done that. Um, but this is actually pretty good enough, especially seeing that scatter shot searches for any machining card that's not a grade two. Um, having like two more grade twos that's not machining doesn't really hurt the deck at all. It just hurts your chances of getting something with Cyberus though. Which let's see, we's running two butterfly officers, three hornets, three um cybersters and three um high class mobs so let me see this three six nine ten eleven okay so eleven grade ones um ten grade twos and um twelve grade threes okay so that's actually an interesting ratio um it's actually it's actually pretty fair too I'm not even gonna lie it's actually a pretty fair ratio um, luckily, Black Saturn isn't restricted to machining only, so that's a good thing. And then Metro Bullet, as long as you have at least, like, five rear guards, then you still get his ability, too, so that's actually pretty good. Um, Ornamental, you only need the machining restriction towards, um, using both of her effects, which I highly doubt is, like, useful. But uh, yeah, her, the combination with Ornamental and Black Saturn is actually pretty good. And yeah, I do. I will admit, like having that triple dry check is actually pretty good. It's just that the deck, like hardly, it's not guaranteed to do four attacks. Like that's pretty much my major issue with like machining. It's not guaranteed to do four attacks. So, but you do have the interlude. So if you do get that one of the attacks in before your vanguard attack he's gonna come in and you're like guaranteed at least one or two more attacks so that's actually pretty good on his own as well uh the power is actually pretty good getting the free units is actually pretty good in the deck too um i'm, I'm hoping that we get black saturn soon we definitely need black saturn um but this is actually Oh, this is actually pretty dope. Like, I remember in my build, I ran both Black Saturn and I ran um, Spark Hercules. But I ran, like, Spark Hercules, I think, like, at two. And I ran um, Black Saturn at three or four, like, one of the two. Um, but, yeah, basically... Okay, I kind of like this build. I actually want to try it out. I'll probably give Ornamental one more chance, too, because I, I definitely feel like she does need a second chance. It's just that I don't like riding her on... I feel like riding her on Vanguard Circle is completely useless, in my honest opinion, but that's just me. And then, let's see. Trigger lineup. We... Oh, oh wait, never mind. I thought he was only running two heals. I was about to say... What type of ballsy shit is this? Oh, no. Nah, I see that he has both of the heal triggers that we have. So, he's running four heals. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, okay. So, he's running uh, ten, two, four. So, he's running ten criticals, two of them being the sentinel crits, two draws, two... Both of them being the draw PGs and then four heals. Okay, so that's a little bit interesting. Um, it's pretty. Oh, it's hella aggro. So he's hell. He's basically going all in. Like I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell you right now. This dude is basically going all in. And if I remember correctly, like his what his post was also talking about how this was like 
the most accurate or it was something it was something about like machining the um black saturn being like the most accurate way of like planning making colonies or just machining in general because this is actually pretty good too i'm not like i said black saturn was a card that i feel like it needed like an update of like like me personally i feel like black saturn should have been an on attack ability instead of an act skill like if it was an on attack ability the car would have been 10 times better but um the regular ability of him getting a plus drive check while at the same time um restanding all of your rear guards is actually pretty good especially seeing that you have to continuously you know rest your rear guards with ornamental rest your rear guards with metro bullet rest your rear guard you know rest cypress in order to activate his ability and everything else like that so you know what to be honest i'm all up for it this is actually pretty good this pretty much looks like the machine build i might be going with i don't know i'm not too sure but this is actually pretty dope I'm, i actually like it I, I like to see the fact that somebody actually took the time to actually play machines because machines did not deserve the disrespect that bushy road has given it especially seeing that machines was carrying mega colony for like the whole first you know they were they're basically carrying mega colony all the way up until cordora came out so they've been you know machines been putting mega colony on their back for like a long ass time so but that's just me all right next up uh let's see oh we have uh we have ross r uh, at AKA Duke, he does have a YouTube channel, so the link will be in the description. Um, he hasn't really made videos in a while, which I can kind of sort of understand. Sometimes life gets in the way, sometimes every, something else gets in the way. Um, sometimes the motivation just isn't there. But he has a spicy uh, deck profile. This is a premium deck profile using Venom Stinger. Now, I'll be real with you. Um, Venom Stinger was a card that I didn't think would really work in premium. But after he explained to me everything about his reasoning for some of the things that's in the deck, it makes a hundred percent. It makes a hundred percent sense now. So he has, um, his grade three lineup is three Venom Stinger, um, four Intimidate Immune Dark Face, and three Sacoma Tooth. So that is 10 grade threes all together. I think the lowest count we've seen so far. Um, and then we have, um, we have two of the Roly, oh, what was his name, dude? I cannot remember his name, but man, it's been a, let me see if I can search that up real quick. It's been a long ass time since I have seen that card. But basically, he gets like extra shield whenever he intercepts. That that's the that's the thing I do remember. He he was one of those interceptors from way back in the day that got like extra shield if you intercept with him. Cause he was telling me, hey, um, unless if you're playing against a clan like Kagura where it just blows up your field, you go protect two in this build. And I was like, okay, that's dope. I don't really mind playing protect two if there's a really cause now of course he said if you're going against something like mega colony i mean if you're going against something that has field control or can um interrupt field or anything else like that on a on a normal basis then yes you do go um you do go back to protect one but to be honest this build was meant for protect two and i was like okay that's actually pretty interesting i like that um I'm still searching for through all these great twos actually. That's why you kinda see me stall a little bit. Cause I'm trying to find this great so I'm all like, yo, I remember this card. This came out way back in the OG era of Vanguard, but it's so old that I do not remember the name. Iron Fist Mutant Okay, I found it. Iron Fist Mutant Roly Poly. That's what his name was. This came back all the way in Calvary of Black Steel. This was, if I remember correctly, this was the build that, like, um, 
that martial arts mutant came out, if I remember correctly. I'll look at after I look at this effect. So let's see. When this unit intercepts, if you have a Vanguard with Mega Colony is named, this shield gets power plus 5k to end the battle. So you already getting an extra 10k um for intercepting. And since it's already a 5k shield, you basically getting 20 you're basically doing a 20k plus shield for intercepting, which is actually pretty good in my honest opinion. That's uh yeah, that's actually pretty spicy. <laughs> well actually it's more than spicy. That's that's genius. Oh my god, this is the same build that special dude came in. Yeah, I was right. Master um martial arts mutant master beetle. This is the same set this dude came in. Like bruh. Man, that's crazy just seeing this card in a modern mega colony build. But you know what? It's actually pretty interesting too because if you're forced to play um if you're forced to play protect one, he's not that much of a lost cause. So that's another good reason why I feel like this um card is like worth running. So let's see, you're running four roly po I mean three roly poly, uh three uh machini mantis, you're running three mega lar lancers, you're running three and three sticky boluses. Okay, so that's actually pretty interesting too. Um, it's your usual like three lineups of grade twos, but man, the roly poly just takes me back, bro. And then you have whole oh, brilliant um shit, what was this dude's name? Brilliant Brilliant Blister. That's what his name. I don't know why I couldn't think of his name at the moment. Brilliant Blister got him at two um which is uh, okay here's an understandable thing here this is how I, I always took brilliant blister in and out the deck and the reason and he only went back in my build if it turns out that a majority of the meta had re-standing vanguards and yeah um right now the meta is have a lot of re-standing vanguards so it's definitely worth um, putting Brilliant Blister back in the deck. And then, like, let's see. You have Twilight Matter, I think, or yeah, I think that's what his name is. Twilight Matter, the grade one. Um, where after he boosts, you put it into the soul and you draw a card. So that's, you know, that's soul charge. That's like free soul charging and free draws. That's actually pretty good, too. And then he's running the promo where I'm hoping that Bushy Roll will hurry the fuck up and give us this promo because man oh when this promo first came when bushy road announced this promo the first time i was like yo this makes it to where i can play old school gradora and this makes it to where i can play old school gradora and not really miss out on protect markers that was my original plan was to use old school gradora and not really get and not really miss out on you know protect markers but this right here is the exact same reason why he's going to protect too because you can get a protect marker from riding into one of the grade threes and then you can get another protect marker from using that particular card skill which is actually pretty good in my honest opinion um it's just a little bit sad that there's only one card that can actually distribute um cradle markers i'm hoping i'm hoping in premium collection 2021 we have a stride that distributes cradle markers i'm hoping that uh but then again i was hoping in 2020 that we would get a stride that you know mills but instead we got barbello for no reason but anyway <laughs> Uh, let's see. Then we have three high class moths, which is actually pretty good too. Typic you know, he's like I said, he's always gonna be in everybody's build. So it, regardless if you're playing machines, if you're playing um, Gredora, if you're playing you know any type of cradle build, you play any build in general. You know, um, high class moth is definitely gonna be in there 24/7. And then of course for the trigger lineup, you're running eight um, criticals, four draws, four heals. 
uh, four of those draws being the draw trigger PGs, and then both the critical sets being from the premium collection. So that's actually pretty good right there. Um, so overall, there's 10 grade threes, there is three, six, nine, 12 grade twos, then there's three, six, nine, and 11 grade ones. That's actually pretty good. Um, a pretty interesting ratio because there's a lot of grade twos. But uh, for the stride lineup, there is one Optorandis. Um, oh, oh, wait, no, never mind. I see like the other G Guard. I was about to say, is he only running three G Guardians? But no, I see the other two. I see uh, two of them, Morfeso, or however you say your name. Then one of the Relish Lady, one of the, um, why can I think of her name right now? And then, of course, one Colin Bard. And then there's one GB8. I see three Overwhelm, four Empress Gredora, and two Parpel. Now, I do remember seeing a video that he, um, he had like a video that he came out with, uh, like around the time this card came out. I forgot if he was like on, I forgot, he was on somebody's channel. I think it was Commander Jamie. Uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. But he was basically saying that, you know, people should have gave this car more of a chance and it, the car does have potential, which basically got me thinking like, yo, let me actually see if I can make this card work. And it's, I'm not, I'm not really having any luck with that right now. I'm not even gonna lie on that. So, uh, man, I like the build. Like, don't get me wrong. Uh, the build is actually pretty good overall. So, um, this is, yeah, this is at, both of the premium builds, they bring so much to the table. It's ridiculous. You know, actually, now that I think about it, I think I have enough play sets of everything to, like, make both builds, actually. I think the only difference is I need to get another play set of the premium criticals. But I think... Oh wait, another playset of premium criticals and probably another playset of uh the Megalar Lancers. That's like the only two things I need to get. Otherwise, I have enough like extras of everything else to make like both protect I mean both premium decks. But anyway, let's move on. Next deck is by Oh, um a Guan Shoda. The guy from earlier. I forgot it. There was a deck profile. I think this is the last one, actually. So this one is... Oh, this one's a little bit different, actually. This is different from the deck profile that he showed earlier in his video. Yeah, this is actually a little bit different from the one that he showed in his video earlier. So this is... A Gredora Venom Stinger deck profile. So let's see. We're run he's running four Gredora, um, two Venom Stinger, two Dust Spade. Um, he's running three Interlude. So that is, let me see, three, five, seven, nine, ten. So he's running like eleven grade threes. Um, it's actually pretty good to see Dust Speed in there. Um. See, that's actually the that's actually the right ratio of like interlude. I actually like to see too. I'm not gonna lie. Like I I don't mind running four interlude though, but I kind of feel like that if you're playing a deck like Redora, then obviously you're going to have like a way to you know get interlude out a lot faster compared to like everything else. Whereas like they have to search it out through a grade three but Ghidorah could get them out pretty easily so that's a good thing um and then of i'm i'm guessing if i'm guessing correctly it's Ghidorah first and then venom stinger for the kill or it's vice versa um basically like i mentioned before Ghidorah is just um Ghidorah has faults and sometimes the other grade threes in the deck actually counteracts the the faults that she has so that's actually pretty cool too um and then like let's see for grade twos 
We got four Mantis, three Sticky Bolas, two Nymphas, and two Nymphas. So that is four, seven, that's eight, nine grade twos all together. Um, a little bit understandable running the Nympha because once you have the Cradle Marker, she's an instant 15. Um, 15k beat stick, so that's actually pretty good. And then, of course, like her effect of putting a cradle marker on a unit, like after that, despite that it does a counter and that I mean, not a counter blast, a soul blast in order to do so. So, that's actually pretty good. And then, let's see, as far as grade ones go, we have four high class moth, three um, stealth multi peed three butterfly officers, two Morsi Roro, and one of the grade one PG, the one that, uh, what does it do? Oh, if you put on the Vanguard circle, you draw a card, discard, is that one, if I remember correctly. So, pretty decent grade one lineup too. Um, instead of the last time where we saw like four Morsi Roro, we seen two, um and then a pretty decent amount especially using stealth multi p like it's actually pretty like i said it's actually pretty interesting to see stealth multi p because he's like kind of 50 50 but then again maybe it was because he wasn't as accessible like i was honestly because remember there was one point where like this car was legitimately 200 dollars, but now he's like a lot more accessible he's a lot easier to attain so i wonder if like him not being super attainable was one of the main reasons why you didn't see a lot of people run it and the card was kind of like 50 50 to begin with but yeah it's actually pretty good to see this card um in the build huh and then let's see it's it's actually overall i'm not going to say it's like super balanced because it would it would be kind of weird to say that this is like 100 percent balanced but there's like enough in this deck to work with to not really uh what what am i looking for it's not a, it's not boy, boy well, hold on i've been doing this i've been doing this video for so long that i'm kind of like losing track a little bit okay there's enough stuff in the deck in order for you to have like some type of uh, way of playing around your opponent and to adjust your play style if needed so that's kind of sort of what i like about this it's like oh your opponent is not really summoning um doesn't really have any rear guards like during your turn oh that's no problem use venom singer you know um oh your pro your opponent has a lot of rear guards in the field oh let's go right back to Ghidorah. and it's like even if you even if you had to play Venom Stinger or Ghidorah on the rear guard circle, it still would kind of sort of be worth it at the end of the day. And then, of course, the draw power is there because of Sticky Bolas and everything. And then, at the same time, the mill power from uh, Dust Speed is there and kind of sort of Venom Stinger with the mill power. So, overall, like I said, it's pretty, it's pretty good. It, there's enough stuff in enough tools in your box in order for you not to have you know in order for you not to be completely stuck so that's a good thing as well uh then of course the grade zero lineup uh let's see four heels four draws two of them being the draw pgs and four five six seven eight oh okay so it's uh eight four four okay it's just that one of the sentinels is the sentinel crit um, and then, of course, you have seven other um, criticals. But, yeah, I, I can see this. Um, I think this is about, like, the last deck profile, too. So, it's actually, it was probably actually pretty interesting to see all these deck profiles, to be honest. Um, yeah, that's actually the last one. So, what I'm going to do is make the, uh, the Spirit Bomb deck. Uh, hopefully I can come up with a spicy enough thing. I'm not going to do it in this particular video though. This video has been way too long. There will be no point in me actually putting it up in this video. 
um, like I originally intended to because I realized this video has been going on as long as it has been but um, I thank everybody for um, putting out these deck lists that I've been reacting to uh, I thank everybody for watching this video this has actually been pretty fun this has been a fun experience um, hope to see you guys soon um, I think like after this, this will be basically like the end of season one for the dark device. We're about to go into season two. Now that we have like overdress to think about and everything else like that. I actually want to see, I actually want to make a video talking about like, uh, all the cards so far from the trial deck that I feel like could go in mega colony a hundred percent. But for now, my name is Mr. Zoo Nation. AKA Savage Armor Jones Rafa. This has been the Dark Device, and happy birthday to myself, I guess.